So to continue with this word, regenerate, this is one of the first times we've had this chance to discuss how to rebuild tissue. For 15 years, we spent time rehabilitating. Everybody knows that. We go to physical therapists, chiropractors, orthopedists. We do surgeries. And then after the surgeries, it follows up with rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is to make the best of what you've got. To make whatever you've got work as good as it can be. There are limitations to every treatment, every service, and everything in, in medicine. Even this. But up until this point, we've been trying to do the best we can with what we've been given. And as we age, it gets harder to get that to function like it should. Has anybody had one of these? Yeah. All right. Cortisone shots, right? Of course. I know that there's sometimes they're very necessary, but as long as we all understand the purpose of the cortisone shot, it's okay to use. The cortisone shot is an anti-inflammatory. It's designed to help reduce inflammation, which in turn would help you hopefully reduce pain. And in the meantime, while that medicine's still working in your joint, you should heal on your own. That's the idea. You're supposed to then maybe rest better, maybe walk a little bit more normally. Hopefully you can heal a little bit better. As we get older, we also find that we don't heal as quick, do we? So how many of us have had these shots more than once? Okay, and that's why. Now, if I was to have one of these shots, I would probably need one. And hopefully my body's young enough and healthy enough to heal in, in about four to six weeks. Whatever injury I did, I can heal on my own. This does not heal me. It doesn't do anything to heal me. It takes inflammation out so that I can then go home and heal and not suffer, not favor the way I walk or, or lift and hurt things further. Steroids also create a softness or weakness to the bone or tissue. And if you repeatedly use them, they set you up for further procedures. Um, if anybody in the room knows about these, these are called joint replacements. Uh, surgeries are your last option for medical care, correct? We don't just hurt our knee and go for surgery, right? We want to make sure we've done everything that's easy, cheap, least invasive, most successful before you have anything invasive that could cause side effects or other problems. <coughs> Has anybody in the room had surgeries? Of course, right? <laughs> Good. Now, this is the saying here. If you do what everybody else does, you'll get what everybody else gets. Unfortunately, the medical paradigm takes you through the, the process of those conservative methods, those home care methods, those conservative therapies, then into injectables, then into surgeries, and then back to therapies, back to conservative methods, and back to home care until it happens again. And we ride that wave back and forth. We've been doing that for about 30 years, pretty solid. It's been a, it's been a very standard medical procedure at this point. That's why they're different than our skin cell. For example, if we have epidermis here, did you know we lose about 40,000 of these a day? Just just like that. But they're not gone, right? We're still here, right? Good. So we rebuild them. But these cells on the bottom of my skin only make skin cells. They don't make anything but skin cells. They just make another skin cell and they come up to the next layer. Stem cells don't do that. They make an exact replica of themselves, which is a day zero cell and a specialized cell. So if the stem cells on the bottom layer of my skin are there, they make an exact replica of a stem cell and then they make a skin cell and it pushes it up to the surface. Kind of cool, right? So again, anti-inflammatory. One of the benefits with these types of products is that just like a steroid, they focus on anti-inflammatory. When you in inject a stem cell into a joint, they have that response. They act like an anti-inflammatory. You feel better right away. But it's not because it's medicine. It's because there's an anti-inflammatory action occurring. These other two are different than steroids. They're diff different. They have modulating your immune system, which means that you're having living biological put in you that modulates or changes the way your body functions. If you sprain an ankle real bad, your ankle swells, right? How does it know to do that? She said earlier, right? Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a universal intelligence inside us that organizes our body inside the cells and inside our nerves that tells us and directs us where to go and what to do. We don't have to think about that. But if we twist our ankle, blood rushes to that area and it swells and bruises. That's very important because it stabilizes the joint and it brings in all these helper cells to help heal the tissue. Those helper cells are called stem cells. Very interesting. Now, that's one thing it does that, of course, steroids don't do. The last part is, of course, it regenerates or rebuilds tissue. The biggest problem with this is that as we get older, we don't make so many, right? 
Now, someone had asked us at another workshop, what, what happens when those copies of cells occur as we get older? Is it like a copy of a copy of a copy and they just get really crummy? <laughs> is that what it is? And, and my answer is very simple. No, it's actually genetically identical. The problem is that we're older and it happens a lot slower. It doesn't, it doesn't just happen as quick, but they're very good copies. And in the meantime, as they go slower, we have the ability to age, which is what we do, right? A newborn, that's what the column on the left here has, your left, is one in 10,000 cells in our body are stem cells when we're newborns. If you get here to around my age group, one in 400,000 cells are a stem cell. And if we're over 65, nearly one in two million cells is a stem cell. So the, the regenerative capabilities are very limited at that age. <laughs> so stem cells that we produce, they get exhausted as we get older. They just move slower, like everything else. They just move slower, right? In one day, in one day, a newborn can produce one billion cells from one cell. Tom Brady and myself are about the same age. I know Gail, I know, come on. All right. So every two days, my body makes about 32,000 cells. That's pretty good, right? But if I'm losing like 38,000 cells, it's not so good. <laughs> if I lose 40,000 cells every day of skin alone, that's not so good, right? So we age. Real quick, we age. And over 65, one cell takes nearly three days to make 200 cells. So our healing potential is just terrible.